CS50 week five is all about data structures. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So as usual, we have our video for week five, which is great. I actually think, obviously, I think Professor Manlin does a great job explaining CS in general, but his explanation of data structures, specifically things like queues, stacks, really helps a lot. So I definitely highly recommend checking it out. So today, I'm actually just gonna look at lab five inheritance. I'm not gonna get into any of the problem sets just because of time on my end, but if anyone does want me to go through that, let me know and then I can make a video in the future about that. So inheritance basically simulates the inheritance of blood types from parents and grandparents. So what we wanna do is we wanna be able to use recursion in our code to be able to get blood types from other people in previous generations. So here's some background on that. And then we can go ahead and get right into the code as well. So let me go ahead and jump over there. So here's my inheritance setup. So as usual, we have all the required header files. And then here is where the struct person is defined. And one thing I'll note is that I actually changed the name of the pointer from P to uh, pointer or PTR underscore person, just to make it clear to me that, okay, this is supposed to be a pointer to a person, but that's not required. Totally feel free to keep it as P. So each person is going to have two parents and two alleles. So specifically, each person struct is going to have its own pair of people, specifically pointers, two people called parents, and there's gonna be two of them, and then two, two cars or two characters that are going to be representing each allele that that person has for their blood type. So as we keep going down, we can see that there's a set number of generations. One thing that's cool about this code is that it's actually set up to where even if we change this to say 10 or five, we can actually see the output of the blood types for all those generations. 10 will be a little bit much, but I'll show an example later of doing um, more than three. So as we keep going, we see that, yes, there's going to be a pointer to a person. And this is specifically going to be using the generations function or no, 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 my bad, sorry. So I misspoke. All these are basically function declarations. The function definitions are gonna be below here. And then right here is our main function. So what's happening as we know is that first the SRAN times zero is gonna be seeding the random number generator. And then we, we wanna do is we want to call the create family function and input generations, which we defined previously as three. And we're going to create a family using that function. And now we wanna use the print family function that we are gonna define below. And we're gonna input the pointer to the person. And then zero, we may have caught this, but zero is an integer and it's going to represent the generation that we want to input into the print family function. And then we want to call the free family function to free the memory. So let's go ahead and take a look at the function definition. So first we have the create family function. So I wrote down some notes in the comments about what's happening. So one of the first to do notes from CS50 is allocate memory for a new person. And we want to note that the size of function allocates memory based on the size of the struct. In this case, the struct is a person. So what's nice about size of is it's going to automatically detect how much memory the struct needs. So what we're going to do is we're going to allocate memory using malloc size of person struct, and then we're going to store that in a pointer called pointer person. Cool, cool, cool. And then we can keep going. 
So what's happening here is if there are still generations left to create, then we're gonna go through this process. And we notice down here with the else, there may not be any more generations to create. In that case, what we're going to do is we're going to basically assign the furthest back generation, like the, mo the oldest generation basically, we're going to set their parent pointers to null because we don't want them to have parents, at least in our scheme. And we want to assign each of them r random alleles. And we're gonna use the random allele function to do that. But if they're not the oldest generation, then what we want to do is run through this recursive setup. So for the person, we want to create two new parents for the current person by, oh, by recursively calling the create family function. So as we notice, we're actually in the create family function but we wanna go ahead and call it recursively to be able to create two new parents for the person we're creating. So, and we see, yeah, person here. So for example, for parent zero, we're gonna call create family and we're gonna input the integer as generations minus one. So remember we started with generations equals three. So generations minus one, is gonna equal two. So it's gonna run through this again, and since two is greater than one, it's gonna go down here again, and then it's going to go down to where generations minus two equals one. So we're gonna go down here, and then one is not greater to one, so we're gonna go down here to this else. Really, that's exactly what we want because the oldest generation, we wanna assign their alleles randomly, but if they're not the oldest generation, then we want to get the alleles from that person's parents. So after we go to the oldest generation, we're gonna have their alleles, and then we can actually go down here and then randomly assign current person's alleles based on the alleles of their parents. We will need the alleles of the oldest generation generated first, but then we can plug those into this setup. And then that's, that's pretty much it for create family. Okay, now we can go to free family function. So we want to free all the pointers and all the ancestors of P. So what we wanna do first is we wanna handle the base case. So if the input is null, meaning that a certain person doesn't have any parents, then we want to just be able to return that, no problem. And then what we wanna do is we wanna free the parents recursively. So we actually wanna call this own function, free family, in the free family function on each of the two parents so what's happening here is the arrow notation allows us to grab stuff from the pointers. So PDR person is a pointer to a person, and then we're gonna get that person's first parent represented by parent zero. So that's, that's what's happening right there. And then we're just gonna do that recursively. And then we're gonna free the child. We're gonna free, free that setup. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna go down to the print family function. So this takes a few different inputs. It takes a person and a number of generations. So we're gonna handle the base case first, similar to before. And now we're gonna go down here. This print indentation, this, I'm pretty sure this was already set up for us, but it's just going to print a set number of spaces just for formatting sake. And then as we keep going down here, we'll see that we want to print the person for based on their generation. So if the generation is zero, then that's gonna be the child, like the, the final generation. So we wanna print child generation, percent I is just gonna input the generation number from before. And then we wanna print their blood type 
percent %c, as we know, just is going to print the variable of the character. And then these are just the variables that are going to be inputted there. And then else if the generation is one, so these are going to be the parents, we want to do the same thing, except it's just going to be different people's information that gets printed. And then else, basically this else is going to handle not just grandparents, but any older generation. So great grandparents, great, great grandparents. So let's say generations equals five. We're going to have not just great grandparents, but we're going to have great, great grandparents. So this setup will be able to handle that, which is pretty sweet. Okay. Then we want to print parents of the current generation. Awesome. So it's just going to use recursion again. And then we can go down to our final function, which is the random allele function. So essentially it's just going to use the modulo. So rand mod three, and then depending on the remainder that occurs from that, it's going to output either A, B or O, which are the three blood types. And that that's exactly perfect. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of it running. So let's go ahead and CD into, okay, make, awesome. So this is cool because just right off the bat, everything works well. And this is just saying that based on our inputted three generations, this is one setup for what blood types can look like depending on the random blood types assigned to the grandparents. But like I was saying earlier, let's go ahead and change this to say five and then run it again. So like, let's make inheritance, inheritance. And this is cool because now we have a lot more people and the oldest generations are gonna be great, great grandparents. And we can even do this with like seven. I think this might be a little bit much, but let's see what happens. Oh, that worked. Okay. So now we don't just have great, great parents, great, great grandparents rather, but we have great, 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 great grandparents, which is kind of cool. That's pretty much inheritance. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching.